Lemon Amiga Presents A Playtime Video Review Sit back and enjoy the show Hi, welcome to another Lemon Amiga gameplay review. This time we'll be taking a long look at Elite 2 Frontier, coded and designed by David Braben in 1993 and released through Game Tech. From the title screen, the player gets to choose from three different locations to start the game, Lav, Mars or Ross 154, and so we'll select Ross to start the game. We've piloted the Eagle Long Range Fighter, which has been donated to us by our long lost father, Peter Jameson, who's died and left us this craft in his will. The Eagle comes complete with atmospheric shielding, an autopilot, a scanner, and a one megawatt pulse laser, which we will need to take on pirates a little later on. Pressing the F4 key will communicate with the Sirocco station on Ross 154, and here we are going to the upgrades to uh, remove some of our homing missiles which have been included with the ship and that should give us a little more cargo which you can see in, in the bottom left hand corner uh, which gives us five cargo space uh, which is uh, just enough to start trading this early in the game and we have a tiny little bit of cash in which to start looking at the shipyard we can choose to repair our craft and because it's a brand new craft it should be under top repair already we can check out the uh, new or reconditioned ships that we could afford to buy much later on in the game and we can also contact the police as well in the shipyard but the main aspect of the game at this stage is to trade and start to earn money by going through the uh, stock market catalogue we can find a list of uh, all the goods available and their prices any uh, uh, vacant items in stock like these luxury goods or the fruit and veg up there means the uh, this particular spaceport is desperate for those items and you'll get top price for trading those if you bring those home to the Sirocco station so I can't afford much at this stage so I'm going to buy four tons of grain which reduces our cargo space down to one and virtually wipes out our reserves of cash and that we will use to trade with the next star system in the galaxy. Uh, while we're here we can also check out the notice board and you'll find items to uh, trade. Luxury goods there will pay 3,000 per ton so if you bring luxury goods uh, back to uh, the Ross system you'll get a lot of money for trading those. Um, those aren't necessarily there permanently these are just the latest adverts. Battle weapons again a lot of cash for trading those and you'll also find extra missions as well trading missions delivery missions and we can even join the army as well uh, if we should choose to do that through the bulletin board but at this stage i think we're loaded up so let's press the top button to request clearance for takeoff and all we do is press f7 or the takeoff button there to propel us into the sky press f9 or press the uh, button in the bottom uh, right hand corner to raise our undercarriage 
and then hold down the enter key to instigate forward thrust. You can also see I'm pressing F1 to change the view from the internal forward view to the external view here and you can also uh, toggle a rear view as well which is handy for taking off and here we go into space through the atmosphere so here we are on Ross 154 on a planet called Merlin and uh, by pressing the F2 key we can bring up our map which shows our current location in this vast galaxy Ross 154 there is highlighted in the center and the circle, the uh, pink circle, shows the uh, distance we can travel. So Boinoid Star is within our range. So let's move the uh, map using the arrow keys, the cursor keys, until that's highlighted in green. And that will plot those coordinates into the hyperdrive. F8, or pressing the symbol there on the lower right, will instigate the hyperdrive. And here we are in the Boinoid Star system. Select an F1 to show us the rear view, that's the warp tunnel that we've just warped out of. And uh, F2 again to bring up the map, and F2 again to bring up a local map. This is the local star system. Every system contains a habitable base or a satellite, and in this system I'm going to zoom in on Birmingham World, which has a satellite called Boston Base. Clicking on Boston Base will then program those coordinates into the Navicom, and pressing F7 will put us into autopilot, which will then guide us to that destination. Uh, if we uh, look at the uh, bottom left there, we can see a strip of arrows which will toggle our Star Dreamer. And pressing the fastest one will propel us into the galaxy as fast as possible. And if you press Escape twice, we can choose to turn off the music or select music, which music plays in which scenario. So let's turn off all those musics and return to the game, put the story dream on maximum so that we can reach our destination. Upon arrival the Navicom will turn off the story dreamer and place us in real time again and it will instigate the automatic docking procedure as long as we have the automatic docking computer installed. And which isn't always accurate. If you press F7 to place yourself in uh, manual mode, press and hold down the right mouse button, we can then go into manual flight mode and angle that thing into the space station to save us crashing into the walls. The automatic docking computer isn't perfect by any stretch of imagination and so sometimes we'll need to guide that thing in manually. So here we are, this is Boston Base and here we can uh, go back into the stock market and dump our grain sell that for a little profit and that also frees up our six cargo bays for the next round of trading every time we use the hyperdrive that will use one ton of hydrogen fuel so every time we enter a star base we must get a ton of hydrogen fuel to propel us onto the next system the next system in this case happens to be the sol system which I'm sure you'll all be familiar with once you see that. And in Sol, uh, the most valuable items are computers, robots, and any kind of high-tech equipment, such as heavy plastics and metal alloys, and you'll be guaranteed better prices for those should you import them into Sol. So at this stage, I'm going to buy uh, some heavy plastics, as much as I can afford, with as much space as I can cram in there, and uh, a quick look at the bulletin board to make sure that nobody wants any packages delivering uh, to Sol, which it's uh, certainly possible to do so. And we can also find shops which deal in illegal goods. And some of the shop advertisements are legitimate and you will get around the law. And some of them, when you click on them, are actually police traps in disguise. And if the police catch you trading illegal goods in a, a, an illegal shop, you will have to pay a fine and refusing to do so will get you arrested upon leaving the space station and unfortunately it's game over and we'll be seeing a lot of game overs in this game the legitimate shop is actually Haynes and Son and clicking on that will give you no police harassment that's actually the son of Haynes and Son you can see in the picture 
and the Hazenson merchants will always be there, irrelevant of any police traps and fake shops in the bulletin board. So let's leave Barnard's store, that's the rear view of us exiting that station, and move on to the next system, which is Sol. Now, Sol is an important system. Not only is it the home of the Federation, which is a united political front and a trade union uh, in this system, Sol is also the home of planet Earth. So, without further ado, let's zoom in and click on that uh, planet, and check it out, and we'll see many bases on the planet which we can fly to and it is also orbited by three satellites representing the three major superpowers. So let's click on the Abraham Lincoln uh, satellite F7 twice to instigate our autopilot and we can leave that to do that while we inspect the system. As you can see there are seven starports listed around planet Earth and there is also a starport on the moon and a satellite orbital station and also on Mars, one of the planets of Jupiter and one of the planets of Saturn. So we have many possible landing places, maybe even a dozen in this system. And now that we've arrived at our destination, let's press escape twice. That's load and that's save. Click on save and that will save our progress with an addendum number. We're up to number four at the moment. If you'd like to turn that off for any reason, press escape twice again, and in the options you will find right at the bottom, use file name extensions. Let's click that off, click save again, and now we can virtually save as any name we like and rename uh, it to any file name. So click on OK to save that and continue with the game. And uh, let's speed up and let's get into this Abraham Lincoln. We're always charged a very small fee, in this case four credits for boarding in a starport. If you haven't got four credits like I haven't got, then you will have to sell your items first of all to get some cash and then uh, remembering to get the one ton of hyperdrive fuel again. Always remember that and now we have some cash we can go into the shipyard and pay off that uh, fine again if you don't pay that up even though it's four credits if you don't pay that up before you leave the station you'll be arrested and it's game over so let's pay that off and then continue the easiest way to start trading is to simply go back and forth from Barnard's store to Sol and so that's what we're going to do on this uh, introduction I'll buy some fruit and veg and some grain, basically use up all my cargo space for food and then courier that all the way back to Barnard's store and reap the benefits. It's also a good habit to press F9 whenever you leave a, a spaceport and that will raise our undercarriage. It is possible to fly around with the undercarriage down but that will get damaged after a while doing that so always remember to press F9 and then choose the uh, Navicom to plot our destination in there and speed up the Star Dreamer uh, to get us there relatively quickly. And once again the automatic pilot seems to have caught this one up so I'm going to put this back into manual mode with F7, we'll hold down the right mouse button and guide that in. Uh, the player might notice that it's down for up and up for down, so to reverse that mechanic all you need to do is press escape twice and you will notice uh, reverse left right controls, reverse up and down controls. By clicking on reverse up and down we can then continue the game and now up on the mouse goes up and down on the mouse goes down and that makes navigation so much easier, I'd certainly recommend that. So let's press F4 to get into the base and sell off all our items, get the hydrogen fuel and buy some more items to trade with the other systems. So that trade route is definitely recommended for beginners, certainly one of the quickest and easiest ways to build up cash, but I'm going to show you another way, uh, a more lucrative way by going to the Wolf 359 system, which is the next one along from Sol. 
and at this point I notice our internal fuel tank has run dry so let's buy one ton of hydrogen fuel by clicking F3 we can switch to our communication screens and click on refuel we'll then refuel our internal tank which runs the interplanetary drive so that will need to be refilled every so often that drive is used to navigate between the planets and of course the uh, hyperdrive is used to navigate between the systems so once again a quick look through the bulletin board reveals nothing of any significance so we have the hyperdrive fuel and the internal tank full so that means we can now get back to the wolf system and it can be often handy to write down certain trade routes and note down the uh, the prices so that you can highlight the best trade routes and the most productive prices uh, that's certainly one tip I'll recommend and now that we've reached the uh, wolf system let's uh, click on Camp Donald's and we will go to the Powell High Orbiter which is another trading satellite activate the Star Dreamer and get there so the great thing about Wolf 359 system is that it's uh, a rebel independent system and that means certain things which are illegal on Sol are actually perfectly legal here like narcotics it's possible to buy 13 tons of narcotics so let's get as many as we can afford and I know for a fact those items will gain a tremendous trade price in most systems but particularly on Sol and because Wolf 359 is adjacent to the Sol system it's really quick to build up your uh, trade score using that method and so I'm going to save this game up again save click on the next one and just to make sure that uh, if anything does go wrong I've got a backup and things do go wrong plenty in this game particularly because trading in drugs is illegal and after a random search the police have actually found our cargo and have fined us so if we go back into the bulletin boards find Haynes's merchandise and sell all our narcotics we will then have quite a few thousand extra than what we started with and uh, we can then pay off our fine and that allows us to leave the station so we gained 4,000 credits and we wasted 2,500 in the fine which gives us a two grand profit but if we should reload our save from just outside of the station there we will find that the uh, random search has not proved fruitful and they failed to find our drugs so that means we can sell our narcotics and gain a, a whopping five grand profit simply because we reloaded the game and avoided the search after exploiting these trade routes to the max you'll gain enough money to buy yourself another ship and you can see here I've acquired an adder which has a maximum of 14.5 light years range it has a 1 megawatt pulse laser which I've fitted and the cargo space is almost double the size of the Eagle fighter we started with and despite trading in illegal goods there we now have 4 tons of robots uh, of which to trade and we also have a package from Tony Jennings has given us a parcel he will give us 900 credits for delivery to the Altair system so this is it it's uh, just to the side of Barnard Star that's Barnard Star Sol there so we can just about get to Altair with a, a big tank of hydrogen fuel from that point and the Altair system there are a couple of uh, bases there the major imports are robots which uh, well we have the robots and all the luxury goods computers as well so it's a good job we have those but on route we happen to be attacked and before we can do anything about it the guy rams us at point blank range destroys our ship and we die so let's reload that and try again so remember to press F2 twice to bring up our local map and in this sector we were looking at uh, trading with Bushport which is orbiting the planet known as Big Colony and when we return we find we are being attacked again so what can you do you press F7 to bring the uh, player back to manual control hold down the right mouse button and 
when we have the enemy in our sights he will be at one end of that laser by holding down the right mouse button and clicking with the left we can fire whichever weapon we have available in this case it's a one megawatt pulse laser which is rather weedy but by lining that up with the enemy and when the enemy gets within our sights we can fire in his general direction and track him through space and eventually by depleting his ship armor or any shields he might have eventually by whacking that guy over and over again you will cause enough damage to set that thing on fire which will leave a trail of smoke through space if that's at all possible and by repeated shots hopefully uh, if the guy isn't too difficult to hit you should be able to blow him out of the sky and later on those guys will even give us bounty so let's see if we can get there and oh no as soon as we activate the story dreamer we are attacked again by another one so let's blow him up in the same manner as the previous one tips to remember definitely avoid flying directly into those guys try and strafe them or fly in parallel but never try and uh, fly directly into those or they will ram us head on and as you've seen they will blow us up definitely avoid that one uh, if possible try and hit the enemy at close quarters uh, by flying towards the guy you'll notice the uh, ship's coordinates are still locked on our destination at this point and this is actually a viper this is uh, one of the craft the police use uh, and we'll certainly see plenty of police vipers later on uh, the viper is a very fast craft and it's also got missiles so what can you do to evade incoming missiles uh, at this stage they're not too difficult they're quite slow so let's head back to our destination here it comes you can see it approaching let's head back to our destination and hope we can outrun that missile before it gets a lock on uh, let's reset the navicom and bang we've been hit and our scanner has been damaged and that will reveal no ships on the radar but hopefully we'll be able to buy another scanner once uh, we reach the starport in the altair system so certainly missiles can be rather deadly at this stage in the game and we will find out how to avoid those and evade those a little later on meanwhile we've arrived at bushport station and that gives us a chance by pressing F3 we can flick through our inventory and this parcel uh, from Tony Jennings will be picked up and when it does so payment has been made in full you will be credited the 900 credits in this case and we can get on uh, back to the uh, narcotics they're worth a hell of a lot in this system we can now get on back to the uh, trading sell everything that we've got and return to the soul system not much happening in the bulletin board sometimes there might be a package to uh, take back to soul but not in this case so let's pick up some liquor and head back out there and in this case we'll return to boston base because our ship isn't capable of making the jump to soul in one go so as long as we have enough hyperdrive fuel uh, to make it uh, we can now return to Barnard's uh, store back to Boston base and we can trade our newly acquired goods there but as I say once the player manages to rack up some credits in the bank probably one of the most lucrative trade routes is to stock up on computers and robots from Barnard's store and take them to any base in the solar system uh, so let's load up on those particularly because searching through the bulletin boards often reveals uh, privateers hoping to buy robots and computers and they will give you sometimes twice the market value for those so you might buy those for maybe 500 on Barnard store and maybe sell those for 1500 by the time you return to Seoul so a thousand credits per trade that's certainly uh, an effective trade route and certainly ranks up there with the narcotics uh, route we discovered by going to the wolf system unfortunately we don't appear to be going anywhere at the moment because the hyperdrive isn't working and looking at our inventory screen we notice that we have two tons of military fuel instead of two tons of hydrogen fuel 
So all we can do is set the Navicon back to Boston base and fly back in there, trade up our military fuel and get hydrogen fuel instead. The military fuel will be used later on when we acquire military hyperdrives, which are much lighter than normal hyperdrives. So fitting one of those will give us much more cargo space and uh, they more or less travel the same distance. Uh, it's just that they're a lot lighter. So we'll investigate the military hyperdrive aspect a little later. But for now, let's just get the hydrogen fuel. And it's two tons because we're in the ASP. It was one ton in the Eagle Explorer because it had a, a much lighter ship, which required much less fuel to travel the same distance. And as we upgrade our ships later on, that hyperdrive will need more and more and more hyperfuel to get to its destination. So let's take a look at Mars this time, and this time I'll be selecting Mars High, the satellite orbiting Mars. And you might notice since this is the year 2300, Mars has actually been terraformed, and it has a uh, blue sky and many star bases on there. So this is Mars High. Let's dump our computers and robots. And as I say, it can be very helpful to search the bulletin boards, first of all, just to make sure we're not missing out on a, a great bargain. So as you can see, a trading goods is probably the most profitable way to gain cash in this game, and trading between Wolf, Sol and Barnard's store is probably the most profitable trade route, and persevering with that tactic will ultimately give us a lot more cash pretty quickly. So here we are again at Barnard's store, yet again the Navi computer is determined to crash us into that thing, so let's do it manually and get in there. I'd certainly recommend trading luxury goods with Barnard's Star because even though that doesn't give you a tremendous amount of profit, sometimes there might be a profiteer asking for luxury goods in the bulletin boards and that gives us uh, quite an increase in score, not amazing but decent enough. And let's refuel uh, our craft again since the internal tanks are empty again. Get back to the stock market, get two more tons of hydrogen fuel. Now then, for this uh, next section, I'm going to buy some upgrades. Let's buy the atmospheric shielding, because we want to return to Merlin, where we started from. We've also bought a scanner, an automatic pilot, and the laser. Since we bought this ship, all ships come without extras. You have to buy them whenever you upgrade the ship. So, next stop, Merlin. Let's hope we can get there. Let's buy some robots use up all our cargo space and uh, hopefully we'll be able to sell those on Merlin and get a decent profit. The great thing about Merlin is animal skins are illegal and that once again is a highly profitable good to trade. Uh, once we arrive in the system uh, I'll save up the game which as we shall see was not the right method to do uh, I'd certainly recommend saving the game in a spaceport or on a planet. Sometimes after a space battle, the game will give you time to save that up and recover your strength, but never ever save in the middle of a space battle or just as you materialize into brand new territory, basically because you never know what's going to happen. And if you save just at the wrong place, just at the wrong time, you could save just before you are attacked by somebody indestructible and you'll have an endlessly repeating save game. So let's reload our save position and try and get back to Merlin. When we finally arrive at the planet, we find we can press F4 and request clearance. In this case, uh, landing bays on the planet are all full and we've been denied access. I don't have enough hydrogen fuel to get back to anywhere civilized, so I decided to put the craft in orbit and hopefully by the time it's gone around in orbit a few times the base should be clear. Unfortunately that didn't work because the Navicom ploughed me straight through the middle of the planet. So uh, take three. This time I decided to fly around the cosmos hoping that by the time I arrive back at the planet the base will be clear and I can land. Unfortunately for me the only thing that happened as a result of flying around the cosmos was that I attracted the attention of a space pirate who dutifully attacked me and it took quite a while to knock him out of action with this weedy one megawatt pulse laser. 
and uh, sometimes it's best to only press that thing when the target is bang on target because that tends to be more accurate than just flying around firing wildly. When I finally got rid of that guy I returned to Merlin with empty fuel tanks as you can see the interplanetary drive is empty requested uh, landing once again after flying around and what did that tell us? Well access denied we've flown around it's now a day later than we arrived and still access denied so I tried to land on the planet and that ended up with game over so in desperation without any hydrogen fuel to do anything otherwise I decided to fly down to the planet's surface in the hope that I can hang around and monitor those guys leaving the spaceport so that if any one of those decided to leave while I was there I could then nip in, land, get the hydrogen fuel and leave Unfortunately for me, having hung around the planet for the best part of the day, nobody decided to leave. So, in desperation again, I decided to blast people out of the starport. And that certainly worked. Uh, the, the guy is now leaving the starport, which means I've attracted police attention there. And the police vipers wasted no time in blowing me out into space. So let's try that again. Uh, fly down to the planet's surface, uh, blow a guy out of the starport, and that will incur a fine of 10,000 credits. And at this stage, luckily for me, I can afford that 10,000 credits. So if I decide to uh, click on the communication screen again, request landing clearance from Sirocco, which has been denied because of outstanding fines, so let's pay that off and it says fine paid by remote transfer so that should mean clearance granted thank god I can land on Sirocco station unfortunately because I've just blown that guy out into space I'm now under attack from the same guy who once again wastes no time in blowing me out of the goddamn airlock so that didn't work either let's try that again this time from much closer quarters hopefully so that I can run through the same formula, pay the fine, land uh, much more quickly. So let's get rid of him, blow him out of the sky, the police vipers have blown each other up, request denied, pay the fine, request and god damn it he managed to ram me out of the sky. So as you can see if you haven't got enough hydrogen fuel to get out of any particular system and having to reload the same save over and over again you might find yourself in a dead end situation and no matter how hard I try no matter which formula I try and employ to get myself landed on this particular planet surface I can't and look at all these police vipers one after the other after the other determined to blow me away and it won't be long before I meet my maker yet again so I tried again from even closer range went through the same formula access denied spent far too much money on the whole procedure and then before I knew it I was blown out of the sky by this guy crazy by the time I reloaded it again uh, my ship was even attacked before I even got anywhere near Merlin and you don't need me to tell you the end of the story I attacked this guy, he fired a missile and blew me away. So I tried again from the same save and the same thing happened. Different guy, similar missile, got rid of me. Dead. So, in sheer desperation I decided to fly down to the planet's surface uh, to attempt a soft landing and after flying around the surface for a while I noticed nobody was taking off from the starport so that was a complete waste of time and I load my undercarriage and attempted to soft land on the planet's surface to wait for those guys to depart guess what happened I blew up that is definitely not recommended so finally I reloaded the game from an earlier save point and flew off to earth instead which is certainly a much easier proposition this is me approaching the London starport right now and as you can see an incredible amount of detail has gone into these landscapes uh, buildings and roads and lakes and rivers most of which the player will never ever see 
and checking the bulletin board it has crashed and I'm unable to navigate that menu and that's certainly yet another one of those bugs in the game. A little later on we find ourselves at Grant's Claim which is a planet revolving around the uh, Ross 1 to 8 system and is practically the next planet along from Wolf 359 which we visited earlier. Just like Wolf, narcotics are illegal in this sector and also firearms and uh, slaves and that kind of thing. So if uh, the player does like to deal in illegals and narcotics then certainly a quick trip to this system uh, can often reap its own rewards. And this is us arriving at Merlin eventually. Probably months later, it's now the 3rd of February and we tried to access this place in December so thank God the spaceport is now clear. And uh, on Merlin, as we've seen, there is uh, a great uh, animal skins trade route uh, because under the surface of Merlin there is actually an underground sea which is full of fish and that's why animal skins are extremely cheap here and we can certainly trade those on to most other systems for a decent profit as long as, as I say, because it's illegal in most systems as long as you avoid the law and the law will search uh, craft entering and docking in spaceports at random so as I say sometimes if you save before entering those and reload that's certainly one way of avoiding that happening otherwise you'll just have to pay the fines and get on with it. The good thing is illegals are often so cost effective that even after paying the fine it's still cheaper than trading legal legitimate items. And as you might have guessed trading in this game does require time and patience and use of the storage room to speed things up otherwise it can take an incredible amount of time to uh, accumulate enough money to upgrade and buy yourself a new ship. So I've acquired 39 grand at the moment and that's enough to buy me some of these. Uh, notice the part exchange figure there and it's worth working those prices out because you always part exchange in this game. Here we take a look at the adder. This is the ship that we have at the moment. It comes with a 40 ton internal space, requires one crew member to fly it and you also get a unique registration code there as well not that that does anything that's just the license plate for 73 grand we could afford this constrictor which requires two crew and uh, that's not a bad ship and comes with 90 tons cargo space let's just have a look at a viper this is the uh, probably the longest range craft can see with the class 3 hyperdrive it has a range of 27.69 light years and the player will have to find a gecko or an anaconda to beat those kind of light years statistics but that should mean the player will be fast and I'd certainly recommend the Viper for long distance courier missions and things that require a big old hyperdrive for a lot more we have this lion transporter with an incredible 235 ton internal cargo bay and I should expect so for uh, a quarter of a million credits and that's uh, really good for trading that kind of thing not so much for action and look at this for uh, big books 2.6 million credits we can get this uh, Panther Clipper which has got 2000 tons internal space and class 8 hyperdrive there which isn't even listed on the hyperdrive range is there at the bottom so that can travel a long distance and carry a lot of equipment but it'll take a long 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 time to actually afford these ships and at the moment i'm looking at this uh, cobra mark 3. the uh, the cobra mark 3 is probably one of the best general compromise ships for 54,000 so I'm going to buy that congratulations on your purchase I now have a Cobra Mark 3 and as you can see it's completely empty uh, it comes with a class 2 hyperdrive which allows me to travel 8 light years in any given direction so the first thing we'll do is top up our internal fuel tanks to the full and put myself into the upgrades department 
atmospheric shielding is only really needed to visit planets with an atmosphere, such as Merlin. If you're trading between starports, you don't need it. And I'm also going to buy myself uh, the automatic pilot, which is definitely necessary, and the scanner as well, which still leaves a massive 52 tons of internal cargo space, which we can use to accrue a lot more credit. So let's buy a, a, the, uh, the luxury goods for the uh, Barnard store, fruit and veg, and um, when we return there, having delivered those, we'll have a lot more cash, which we can then use to buy even more upgrades. So here we are, back on the Mikhail Gorbachev station, so I'm going to buy myself an ECM system, which automatically blows up any missiles in our vicinity which is terrific since we've already been blown up by a number of missiles already and we're going to buy this radar mapper which I'll show you how to use a little later on and we'll also buy a shield generator which is definitely handy for defeating those pirates and what else have we got? The interplanetary drive is a mysterious item each craft comes with one as standard cannot sell the interplanetary drive because the ship won't work without it and you cannot buy an additional one so I've no idea why that's there but what I'll definitely buy is this one megawatt beam laser which will attach to the front of our ship and that will almost double our firepower by the beam laser effect as we shall see and that definitely comes in handy for getting rid of the space pirates and the missiles, well home missile, smart missile and naval missile relatively the same price so you might as well get the most expensive and the more accurate naval missile which as you can see gives me four there and by clicking on the radar button we can see our armaments at any point so let's load up our luxury goods and return to the Wolf 359 system to hopefully instigate another narcotics run and hopefully demonstrate our newfound uh, one megawatt beam laser so here we are in the system uh, select our candidate, this time I will try Camp Donald's and this time let's try and land on an outpost on the planet itself known as Vincent Village and that shouldn't be too hard uh, it's to get the Navicom and as soon as you put the Star Dreamer on guess what, we're attacked so the first thing as always is to find that guy on the end of one of these lasers, he's got to be on one end or the other pause the game by pressing escape and by clicking on the item and pressing R we can see the details of that craft because we have the radar mapper uh, clicking on the missile and pressing fire will target the missile on that craft with the radar mapper and hopefully he's pressing his ECM system you can see the blue shield there but hopefully that missile will catch up to that guy and blow him up without us having to uh, do too much hard work with the laser if the Navi computer loses track of the enemy, it's important to reselect that again by clicking on the enemy on the screen. And I'll also show you the distance. You can see he's running away there. The distance is increasing, increasing, increasing. I wonder why that is. Well, here's the answer. That's my missile there. You can see approaching from the left. And he's hightailing it out of there in response to my missile uh, to evade it. And once again, it's probably the easiest to put your engines on full throttle and hightail it out of the region if faced with any kind of missile and the missile will only be active for about 60 seconds before it runs out of fuel and uh, after that time the engines will fizzle out and the missile will blow up so he disappeared off the radar but before we even get near the planet we are attacked again so press escape click on the thing or to press the radar mapper we can see he has zero shields and hull integrity is 100% so this time I'm going to use my laser and you can see that hull damage is going down there 63% down to 27.3 down to 19 and he's fired a missile so what can I do? I press my E to access my ECM jammer and if his missile is within range of that ECM it will explode and that will be the end of that. Unfortunately the ECM has failed to blow up the missile. Oh there it is, press ECM there. So I blew up the target 
and the missile. Unfortunately, there's still a missile at Laura Jarrett there. Here it comes, you can see it floating around there. But that's just out of range of my ECM, so I can't blow that thing up. So what I have to do, reset the Navicom and I'll try it again. But unfortunately, I'm attacked again. And perhaps uh, the attack patterns come at random. You might be attacked by one uh, or two or three, anything up to seven or eight, even ten ships, uh, depending on which system you happen to be flying through and whether you are carrying illegal goods. And obviously, if you're carrying a big cargo, that will attract the attention of any space pirates in the area. And all you can do is lock onto those. And look at that bounty 50 flashing there, so if I blow this guy up, with the radar mapper it's told me there's actually an international bounty on the guy and he got me and the shields are having to re-energize because he got me and hopefully now as the shield regenerates I should be able to lock back onto that target and as I say fingers crossed let's hope we can get there and I finally arrived on the planet Camp Donald's is like that Mars like atmosphere, red dust in the air and I'm basically here to sell all my luxury goods and buy as much uh, narcotics as uh, possible. I'll empty out the narcotics from there and just to make sure this run is as productive as possible I'm going to go through the system and empty the narcotics out from uh, power high as well. It seems power high in orbit of this planet. It shouldn't take as long to get there. So let's instigate the launch and press enter to fire the, the retro boosters. And look at that. I happen to be on rear view when I needed forward view. So sometimes you might end up crash landing yourself into the planet just by selecting the wrong view by mistake. And that's certainly one to watch out for. So now that I'm on the right view, uh, let's speed this thing up into the atmosphere and get to the space station. Sometimes even with the Navicom, uh, things aren't always particularly easy. You can see me uh, flying around this thing in circles because the, uh, the Navicom's cocked up and we can't fly in there. And sometimes by messing around with the Star Dreamer, you can reacquire the entrance to that star base eventually or perhaps retarget uh, the thing on the radar but there you go we've made it so let's buy all the narcotics from in there which puts me up to 24 tons and 11 left let's just make sure we've got enough hydrogen fuel to get us back there since we've got all that space to spare and computers and robots are also very cheap uh, so let's buy a few of those and trade those back with earth so it's always important to keep your spacecraft in good condition and after any battle in space it's always a good idea to get into the nearest port and repair any damage that you must have incurred uh, by getting into the shipyard and clicking on the repair damage. Uh, sometimes it's a good idea to maintain the engines as well because if you don't maintain the hyperdrive you can have a missed jump and that could result in you leaping out of hyperspace anywhere really and if the hyperdrive breaks you can even blow up so it's always best to make sure that the uh, hyperdrive works and i'm just booking that thing in for a service there so that it's all maintained and uh, all up to scratch sometimes you can force uh, a missed jump on the hyperdrive by pressing alt f7 and sometimes if you're being attacked by lots and lots of pursuers, sometimes hyperdriving out of that uh, zone is the most appropriate thing to do. But they can follow you into the next sector or wherever you hyperdrive to if they have a hyperdrive cloud analyzer fitted to their system. But if you force a misjump, then they can't track you across space. And let's get this energy boost unit, which doubles the rate at which our shield regenerates. And then let's have a look at this. This is the core system. This is the system that you should be familiar with. Uh, the pink lines indicate the trade routes, some of which we've followed already. Barnard Star there, Ross 154. And if we follow these trade routes all the way down, 
it eventually leads to Beta Hydri, which is the last one in that system. But surprisingly, the galaxy doesn't end there. If we should take a step back and try and navigate through this galaxy, you'll be surprised to find there are 100 billion planets, stars and other space bodies authentically uh, plotted into this galaxy map. And if we should uh, find our core system, there it is, sector zero, 00, seen by the bottom left-hand corner. That's where we are, and that's right in the middle of Federation space. But if we should press F10, this is the galaxy map. This is the actual Milky Way galaxy, which contains all of those 100 billion stars, which is unbelievable considering this game came on just two discs. So let's take the opportunity to fly down this trade route and see if we can reach Beta Hydri right at the end there using whatever means possible and let's trade along that route and see where we get. Beta Hydri itself is a stable system, 30 bodies, look at that, computers and farm machinery and robots and major imports so let's stock up on those and Mackenzie High, Edmondson High and Stevenson Base is the orbital station we'll need to find. So let's load up on those luxury goods uh, in preparation for that long hike. Rebuild our internal tank to the full and let's set off to Barnard Star along that trail route. And I'd certainly recommend pressing F2 followed by F6 to find out the, uh, the economy in each system before you fly there and then you can load up on the best materials to trade when you get there. Sometimes it's possible to carry a mixture of things and once you get to know the uh, trade route values uh, the prices in each system don't really change that much so once you've reached a particular system you'll find the prices don't particularly vary very much uh, so trading in the Sol system on Mars or on the Moon or on one of the uh, star bases around Earth, the uh, the values of trade don't fluctuate, but between systems they really do fluctuate. Some systems are technological and will sell uh, electric goods and hardware and machinery, uh, but those systems might be lacking in certain down-to-earth basics like food and fruit and some uh, systems which are under certain independent rule tend to uh, export luxury items but maybe importing narcotics and illegals will be higher in those systems but definitely explore the import and export stats and robots is generally a great import as well if you can pick up robots you can usually come out with some kind of profit but again once you get used to the trade values this becomes much easier Obviously some stars are easier to get to than others and some spaceports will be quicker to access than others. Sometimes you can avoid going deep into space to, uh, to make a long haul if you can achieve exactly the same aims uh, going somewhere a bit nearer. And it's also a good idea to familiarise yourself with the key systems that you'll end up using uh, so that you can navigate between the uh, trading posts and the satellites as quickly as possible because navigating around using the Navi computer isn't easy and it certainly isn't quick at the best of times and that's certainly one feature which was improved on the CD32 version and the uh, sequel to Elite uh, First Encounters which appeared on the PC so Navi computer is certainly a drawback and there are certainly many drawbacks in this game, quite a few bugs and things that hinder the player, things that might have been designed a little better, but generally I have to give this game top marks, not only for the surface details and the graphics on the planets, but also the sound effects as well. You get to hear the wind noises and the zap of lasers and the engine drone, uh, even though that doesn't change from craft to craft, it's still nice to hear that and nice meaty explosions as well so i think this game was well crafted and they certainly did cram a lot in there i also like the fact that the player can make up their own storyline virtually there are no routes in this game you can make up your own way i suppose the only limiting factor is play speed 
in fact the speed of this game I suppose you could say really depends on what computer you have um, the Amiga 500 it can be really slow unless you turn off all the graphic details on the Amiga 1200 it's playable and of course on the Amiga 3000, 4000 uh, it runs at more or less full speed I'm actually playing this with an 060 CPU which helps the game run at maximum speed and you certainly need that when you're playing a game like this but it's certainly done a really good job of it don't forget this game took five solid years to make and contains a hundred billion stars and looking there at the screenshots that's the BBC Micro original Elite One and that took quite a few years to make on its own and that came out on the Electron, the Archimedes, the 64, the Spectrum etc uh, you can see there a game called Pioneer, which is a direct remake of Frontier Elite 2, available for the PC. And you can see it's kept the uh, same uh, navigation bar at the bottom. And then Frontier First Encounters was released on the PC in 1995. And you can certainly see how the PC takes full advantage of these 3D graphics. And it's certainly a step up from the BBC version so let's get rid of those get back to the game so just a little background then Elite 2 was brought to the Amiga by David Braben and he started out coding Elite released in 1984 Virus which was another 3D space shooter in 1988 and he also created uh, Conqueror as well which was a 3D tank game kind of a, a virus on wheels which was released in 1990 and so David designed and coded this masterpiece uh, with additional code by Peter Irvine who uh, some people might remember uh, crafted Exile uh, for Audiogenic in 1991 and went on to create Exile AGA in 1995 some of the graphics were done by David some by Peter Irvine uh, with additional help by uh, Paul Mitchell and Jonathan Griffiths and Jonathan uh, was responsible for the campaign series campaign 1 in 92 and campaign 2 in 94 and Jonathan Griffiths also worked with uh, David Braben on Conqueror so two tank games there Exile and Virus you can certainly see the pedigree and the history which brought this game to life and just a note about the music was created by a certain Dave Law, David Law, uh, who's no stranger to music on the Amiga, having crafted IK Plus music, Afterburner, Power Drift, Turbo Outrun, and even Star Glider 1 music. And it's certainly worth saying that David Law went on to much bigger, bigger things. Uh, if anybody should go to uh, davidlow.co.uk you'll find he's responsible for many BBC themes including the iconic BBC News theme, uh, Grand Designs, Cash in the Attic, Jeremy Clarkson's Motor World, Fifth Gear and also provided the music for the legendary kids show The Really Wild Show starring Chris Packham so certainly remember that one David uh, is a composer of high esteem and his efforts on this game were certainly not wasted. Looking back at the game it looks like I'm about to be wasted and the orange beam there gives away the fact that that's a 4 megawatt beam laser which is uh, more powerful than my 1 megawatt beam laser and he's firing a missile towards me which you saw I blew up with the ACM. If the missile is close to him when it blows up it will damage him and that's certainly a good thing about using the ECM so that's got rid of him sometimes if the missile is within the ECM it won't blow up or it will blow you out of the, uh, the sky as well so that's certainly one to watch out for if you're using that so let's skip through this base and attempt to get to the last planet in the uh, trade route which is Beta Hydri the one we set out to get in the first place it's taken us quite some time to get here so uh, insufficient fuel, 4 tons of fuel required so that meant we needed to go back to the spaceport and fuel in again but here we go, this is homeland Stevenson base so let's uh, navigate 
through the venues and try and find Homeland. There it is. And Stevenson Base. Uh, let's hope we don't get attacked. There are so many random factors in this game, you never quite know what's going to happen for certain. Uh, sometimes you might be attacked out of the blue by a massive ship which just blows you out of the sky. Sometimes you might not get attacked for half an hour or days or even weeks in this game if you select the right systems uh, and carry the right objects around with you. Uh, there are so many variables, it's unbelievable. So let's load upon supplies and restock on our missiles that we happen to fire uh, earlier on. And at this stage I'm also going to buy another shield generator and another energy boost unit just to make sure we have maximum protection. I'm going to sell my ECM system and buy the naval ECM system which should give us a better range and better uh, missile exploding capability. And look at this, class 1 military drive. It's only 6 tons and I can sell my existing drive the class 2 hyperdrive for more cash if I should decide to do that class 2 hyperdrive is 8 light years maximum and uh, so if I sell that class 2 hyperdrive and buy the class 2 military drive you'll find exactly the same 8 light years except this time the military drive is much lighter which gives us more cargo space to play around with for more trading there's also the class 3 hyperdrive and the class 3 military drive which also have their own benefits and drawbacks uh, obviously the class 3 hyperdrive is pretty weighty at 45 tons which will uh, hamper all but the biggest ships but that will give you a, a, an increased range uh, hyperdrive range as well should you use that and it's certainly easy to rush off to our destination without having enough fuel on board or having the right amount of fuel or the right type of fuel so hydrogen fuel two tons because I've had to top up the internal tanks yet again so that means I'm gonna have to turn around get back into the Stevenson orbiter and get myself some hydrogen fuel to make the journey home and since we're heading home now back to Sol let's turn this uh, freighter into a flying gas can fill it right up to the brim with hydrogen fuel and make all the leaps back to earth using the hyperdrive uh, again if you uh, fill your hydrogen fuel to the top you should be able to make leap after leap back to uh, civilization without having to stop at the uh, spaceports to collect more hydrogen fuel and as we shall see a little later uh, unless we have the fuel scoop and then we can use the fuel scoop around gas giant planets to harvest fuel and that saves us again stopping and wasting time having to deal with space pirates to uh, get to our destination but here we are this is the sol system and i seem to have come out of hyperspace backwards there for some reason strange physics going on in this game but i have to say in general the physics element is spot on the inertia and uh, the way the craft moves and uh, the velocity and the momentum aspects of this game really do pay full respect to real world physics so let's uh, dump these computers and the last of our robots we acquired on that run which gives us 73,000 which hopefully will give us enough to upgrade our ship so let's see what there is um, Look at that Asp Explorer there, that's a nice ship, 120 tons internal capacity, we can afford it, it's only 69,000 credits, it comes with a class 3 hyperdrive which you can see travels 12 light years rather than the 8 that we've got at the moment, and if I upgrade that to class 4 it goes up to 21, and just to compare that with the adder, that measly 40 ton internal capacity that we used to have, but unfortunately the uh, Explorer, the Asp Explorer, even though it's one of the fastest ships in the galaxy and it's got a really good compromise uh, in terms of cargo space uh, it requires two crew members to fly the ship one of the crew members is obviously you but you're gonna have to hire another crew member if you want to fly that ship out of space dock and unfortunately checking the bulletin boards has found 
no crew members on that particular station willing to join me. Uh, no joy in the Hay Blinken station either. So I'm having to fly around uh, the earth looking for an ASP explorer and a guy willing to join my crew in the same place together. And you must do that because if you buy a ship and you don't have a, enough crew to fly it, uh, the space dock will not let you take off and you've basically wasted your money on a ship with no crew to fly it. That is unless you can activate the storage reamer and the bulletin board listings will automatically be refreshed every midnight. So sometimes when a new batch comes in at midnight, you might get some crew members there. And sometimes crew members will even refuse to join your ship, depending on your reputation. The reputation in this game is gained by delivering packages and items and people on time and failure to do that might decrease your reputation and crew members might refuse to join. So let's see if we can find a crew member here. We're in Sydney on planet Earth, uh, a planet that you know very well. And we've managed to find a, a crew member to join our crew when we buy the new ship. So let's sell the old one. First of all, let's strip it down of everything that we've ever bought for it. All the pulse lasers, guns, radar, that kind of thing. The only thing you can't sell when you're trading the ship is the hyperdrive. Each ship must come fitted with a hyperdrive as standard, but all these other things, the energy boost unit, the shield generator, the radar mapper, those can all be sold for extra cash. And there's a ton of hydrogen fuel in there. Let's just get rid of that as well so that we have an empty carcass to trade in uh, for our new ship. So now that we have the ASP Explorer safely in the bag, at this point, let's take the guy up on his offer and pay him full whack, $20 weekly. Uh, it's always best to select the highest pay rate and then they don't mutiny and abandon ship, that kind of thing. So here he is, he's called Seamus Major and he's on a salary of $20 a month, which is a bargain. And we have our new ship. So first thing we should do is upgrade it again. Uh, we can only carry one missile at a time, unfortunately. That's the only drawback of the ship. But we've certainly plenty of room for a scanner and uh, the atmospheric shielding and the autopilot. We're certainly going to need those. And with 71 tons remaining, let's get this four megawatt beam laser attached to the front of our ship. And that should really dispose of the enemies, uh, smart style with such a heavy piece of kit like that. And let's get a shield generator as well. Uh, in fact, we can't, we've just spent all our cash there buying two shield generators. So to free up our cash, I'm gonna have to sell those and then we can get on with the trading aspects of this game, which even though we've got 47 tons of cargo space left, uh, we shall definitely need to return to the trading uh, between buying ships just so that we can afford to buy the next one. So let's check out that 4 megawatt beam laser now in the wolf system and as you can see that guy didn't really stand much of a chance. Uh, the 4 megawatt beam laser is good for knocking out small independent ships at this size uh, at this stage of the game. Uh, once you get onto the larger ships later on in the game you're going to need to ramp up that firepower and if you have a massive, massive ship, you might have enough tonnage to uh, actually buy yourself a plasma accelerator, which is the white beam. And a plasma accelerator will get rid of virtually anything of any size, of any description. But that orange for a megawatt beam laser certainly has uh, paid for itself in seconds there. But trading certainly isn't the only means of acquiring cash in this game. Uh, there's also mining as well. If you buy the uh, MB4 mining uh, laser with a, a 40 megawatt mining laser on board, you can drop that mining uh, equipment off on a deserted asteroid or a, a barren moon, and that will uh, mine minerals for you. And all you have to do is return to those spots and collect those minerals for a free supply, which you can then trade and get the cash back. And it's possible to have 20, 30, 40 mining uh, structures 
on different parts of the galaxy all spread out and they will uh, appear on your radar and another way is to join the army you'll find army requests in most bulletin boards and they will send you on all kinds of missions trading missions assassination missions uh, bombing missions later on uh, reconnaissance spy missions where you have to photograph things from a distance uh, so we'll start off my army career by picking up these three packages which has to be delivered to the Alpha Centauri system and it also gives you the dates by which they should be delivered of course if you deliver those things late then uh, they will negatively impact your reputation and you will get into trouble by doing that I've found the Alpha Centauri system but look at this I'm 900 AU away from our destination AU stands for astronomical units and one astronomical unit is basically the distance between the earth and the sun so that's a hell of a long way and look at that by the time we get there it's the 31st of October and our packages are out of date so let's reload from a save and this time try to take a package to Tau Ceti which is uh, a nearer planet and hopefully that's got a longer date on that so hopefully we can deliver that quickly without damaging our reputation uh, let's just get there and there's a big old colony there all these other coloured dots are ships or the spaceships flying in the area so here we are Gilmore Orbiter and if we happen to wait just like any other package that will be collected uh, congratulations you've earned a promotion to the rank of private and there I am federal rank private uh, this is federal space and all these guys are federal army agents and there are different um, politics in different areas of space there is the imperial fleet as well there's the uh, alliance and there are also independents uh, as well in different systems so Let's continue with that, let's deliver a message to the Barnard Star System since we're going that direction anyway. A couple of messages, that's worth 750 credits for a free delivery. Uh, certainly worth the, uh, uh, the tonnage space or things like that. And every mission that you complete in the game will uh, go towards increasing your rank and more dangerous missions like spy missions and bombing missions will really rack up that rank there and uh, let's just uh, get a drive service to make sure we don't break down but even though reputation isn't actually physically available to view in this game it's certainly important because when you're hiring guys they might charge uh, less for uh, somebody with a good reputation or more with somebody with a bad reputation and sometimes the only thing you can do to cure that is to donate to one of the charities on the bulletin board donating 10,000 uh, books will certainly give you a big thank you and a pat on the back from them and it will increase your reputation as well uh, again it's not a, it doesn't appear on the stats screen even though that's one of the most important aspects of the game and just in case you wanted to travel vast distances uh, the game also gives you the possibility of doing that through wormholes if I travel to this, this is sector 80 stroke 15 and the K-hole system there is 655 light years away from our current uh, location on the Abe Lincoln station around Earth anything uh, further than that and the Navicom will automatically track down a, a wormhole uh, to allow you to warp all the way across to that vast 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 distance across the galaxy and as I say the uh, the galaxy is so big in this game uh, that it took 60 seconds just to navigate uh, the cursor all the way across so having wormhole our way over there let's wormhole our way back and this is Akinar the home of the Imperial Starfleet and that's again over 600 light years away so we can use the wormhole effect to get there and we 
really need to find uh, Akinar 6 to find the capital world, to find the capital of the Imperial fleet. So this is it. This is uh, Capital Planet. And uh, the tremendous detail uh, that went into this game, all these buildings and structures, some games, uh, particularly I'm thinking of Robocop 3 on the Amiga, uh, had whole cities that you could drive around, and that was it. This has whole cities you can fly around, uh, probably, you know, 10 billion times worth. But here we are, this is um, Akinar, slaves are legal, and all the illegal stuff are legal in this system, and buying a lot of narcotics should surely write my ticket home again and pay for that. Uh, other things to observe, well let's take a look at the spaceport and the new vehicles, this Imperial Trader there for getting on for over half a million bucks, that's got 525 tons of internal space and it only requires one crew member to fly, it's an incredible ship, it comes with a class 6 hyperdrive that can go the same distance as we uh, can travel at the moment, 10 light years. Uh, so it's certainly worth saving up for that ship. That's the ship from the intro sequence, you might remember. And that's probably the best ship in the galaxy. Other than that, there is this, the Imperial Courier for virtually half a million. And that's uh, got still plenty of space left. But for me, I'd certainly buy the bigger of the two options. And looking at this, look at that small plasma accelerator there, 500 tons. So that's virtually a full ship just to house the small plasma accelerator. But as I say, that will get rid of a lot. And look at that, 20 megawatt beam lasers are also available in the Imperial sector. And you can also join the Imperial Army as well, and they will give you another variety of missions. Sometimes the, uh, having a rank in the uh, Federation Army will uh, detriment you in the Imperial Army. Sometimes they're not mutually exclusive. Uh, obviously if you've got mixed allegiances, uh, the other side probably won't hire you if you're uh, a high-ranking officer in one camp. Uh, I don't think the opposition will like to employ you unless it's perhaps for a spying mission if you want to defect. So here we are again using the wormhole to get back to Sol and cash in our reward. So as you can see, the core systems there, that's Beta Hydri, and that's the Imperial system. So the core systems aren't too far away from the Imperial system, and you can probably get to Beta Hydri and skip across there if you have enough uh, hydro fuel in the, in the hyperdrive. Um, but definitely using the wormhole is an option and it'll probably take you the best part of 10 years to explore every system in this galaxy and this is just the one galaxy, this is just the Milky Way, don't forget. So back on uh, the Abe Lincoln station it's also possible to pick up people and to use your skills to ferry people around like a space taxi and in this case a group wants to go to the wolf system, five people. So if you have any live animals to transport you might want to uh, put the cargo life support on there, Any, anything live, or if it's people, you can uh, avoid that and simply buy extra passenger cabins which will have life support already built into them. So let's uh, buy five of those at five tons each. That's an incredible detriment to our cargo space, even with the uh, storage capabilities of the ASP. But look at that, I clicked on I want more money and because of our reputation of delivering packages uh, and also donating to charity, we can ask for more money. And he's put his price up to 494 credits for a group of five people to get to the wolf system. So arriving at Powell High, getting on that communication screen, it won't be long before those five um, passengers depart and we get that cash. Yet another one of the 82 basic missions in this game involves Seek and Destroy, otherwise known as Assassination Missions, and they will be found on the bulletin board, but at the moment we have insufficient Elite Federation Combat Rating to take those on. Uh, by destroying uh, a number of ships, our Elite Ranking will go up. You can see it's average at the moment, even though I've probably destroyed uh, 30 40 ships in the meantime you have to destroy maybe 100 ships to really get that thing up there 
and uh, so that's yet another way to make money in this game. Um, not very much money, it has to be said, but it is there. And here we are around Jupiter. Uh, if uh, I put this uh, craft in orbit around Jupiter like this, if I had the fuel scoop at this moment, which is yet another upgrade available from the shop, uh, I could use the fuel scoop to mine as much hydrogen fuel as I'd ever need from uh, a gas giant and uh, you can literally mine as much as your cargo hold can carry and take that back and trade that for a free trade as well although hydrogen fuel really isn't that uh, cost effective if you're going to trade that I don't have enough hydrogen fuel to get to Saturn so let's get back to Earth instead and conclude this review and looking at the scores, C Omega gave this a massive 97% in November 93. Amiga Force gave it 96%. The One gave it 96%. And Shoddy Old Amiga Power only gave it 65%, complaining that it was far too slow in an Amiga 500 and the navigation was tedious. In general, I think this game is a masterpiece myself. How they've managed to cram an entire universe, basically, onto two discs is beyond belief. 100 billion stars, the 82 basic missions, and some missions were even turned off at the last minute. There was even escort missions that were turned off. Uh, you can mine, spy, pirate, courier, assassinate, trade, the world's your oyster. Uh, the game is spoiled by a number of bugs, but it's not spoiled if you press save every five minutes to make sure you navigate around those bugs. So I think overall this game is a masterpiece. If you need any more information you certainly can't go wrong by uh, viewing the Frontier Fundamentals guides on the Jim Plays Games channel on YouTube and I've certainly viewed those before I even began this guide. Certainly recommend those for the beginner and if you need any more hints and tips uh, why not visit the Frontierverse website where you can find hints, tips and guides to all the things we've been talking about this afternoon as well as all kinds of other things as well. So thank you for checking out my play guide review of Elite 2. See you soon.